All right, but we kick off the show with special guest Jay Ashcroft, Secretary of State, been super popular, done a pretty damn good job for all intents and purposes so far. And you can see this popularity because right now with all of the polling, when it comes to the possible next governor of the state of Missouri to follow our current governor when it comes to Mike Parson, Jay Ashcroft is leading all the polling I can find has Jay Ashcroft with a monumental lead over the other candidates that we can see from the Republican side, which was Mike Keogh and of course, Bill Igle. But today we have Jay Ashcroft in studio. Jay, welcome to Cancel This. You feel pretty good to be in here today? I do. Thanks for having me. I always like getting out and listening and talking to the people of the state. I didn't realize until I did more of the deep dive on you. Of course, you're a lawyer, engineer, and <laughs> it seems like the best lawyers in the state of Missouri all go to SLU. Well, and you're a SLU, gra- <laughs> a SLU law grad. I try not to highlight the fact that I'm an attorney because people like engineers a lot more than attorneys. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, but, but there's also a there's a certain status that comes with that. As well. You get law <laughs> and you're a lawmaker. You know, the, the funny thing is, as a kid, I said I'd never go into politics. I'd, I'd never be an attorney. Well, you can see what happened. But I actually ended up going to law school because my wife wanted to go. And Vic, you'll probably like this. She's always been really studious, probably never skipped a class, takes real good notes. I said, <laughs> we'll just go at the same time. This will work great. <laughs> and you're a team. You've been, as Secretary of State has been since 2017? Yeah, January of 17. And you've been rocking and rolling from that standpoint. Why do you want to be governor? Uh, I mean, because there's still more that needs to be done. I, I'm afraid that we're bringing Missouri in for a soft landing and we should be elevating the state. I, I think we, we see tremendous fights nationally and in this state about who's supposed to be in charge. Is it government or mm-hmm. is it the people? Um, are the, are your children your children or are they the states? And we need someone that will stand up and say the purpose of government is to give just enough security to maximize your liberty. And we have to start putting more power in the states and less in the federal government because at a state level, I feel like we can do so much more to protect the citizens of your state, Missourians. And, and we're not doing enough. I love Governor Parson, but there, I, I still think there is more we can do. Yeah, there's, there's a lot more we can do. What I would say is we need to devolve power from the federal government and as much as possible, push that power. I mean, the most local control is mom and dad, yeah. um, but at least to the states and try to get it closer and closer because the purpose of government is not to have more government. The purpose of government is to create an environment where people can make their own decisions. Yeah. That's what took 13 colonies that were not considered to be worth much into world beaters and a lone superpower that took people that have been kicked out of every other country in the world and made them the best in the world, freedom and allowing them to make their own decisions and be a meritocracy. It's so weird right now. It's like we have this opportunity to see what a, a good state like a Florida and then the exact opposite of a California and how people move out and are moving in. Missouri, I feel like, is right in the middle of that because you have a St. Louis and a Kansas City. St. Louis is a is a disgrace. I don't think anybody will um, com- debate that. It's being run badly. It yes, can be yes. great, and okay. it's better for the state when St. Louis does well and the people of St. Louis, they deserve better. Yeah, and has Missouri always been, the governor has always been hands off with St. Louis and Kansas City? No, or- it's really varied. It depends on who's there. It depends on the leadership of the of the metropolitan areas. It depends on who the governor is. And we need a governor and we need leadership in St. Louis that is willing to put the politics aside and focus on the people of the city yeah. and the county of St. Louis. Yeah. So what do you think we should do? How do you think the governor's office, Jeff City, should interact with St. Louis going forward? Uh, and you say they're bad managed and we need and there's people around St. Louis that depend on St. Louis. What would you do to help St. Louis bring business back, make it safe again? And what would you do? You know, I think the two biggest concerns uh, that any business owner has is that thinking about bringing their business to St. Louis. Absolutely. They tell their employees yeah. we're moving to St. Louis, the employees and their spouses. The first thing they do is they Google it and they realize yep. that they believe that they won't be able to be safe and that their kids won't get an education. Right. We've got, and, and, and education is a statewide problem. We need to quit decide, saying that administrators and principals and the state knows better how to educate kids. Yep. We need educational freedom. We need those tax dollars, that money in the parents' hands. That's the best local control Mm -hmm. so they can determine how their kids will be educated and so that educators will be accountable and responsible to parents and to the kids, not to government bureaucrats. And then secondly, on 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 the safety side, the law and order side, there's some changes we need to make in our statutes, Mm -hmm. but also as much as I love local control, if the city of St. Louis isn't going to perform law and order functions for the the people of the city, the state needs to take them over. That's interesting. It's not what too. we want, 
But if they're not going to do it, yeah, you're right. we have to do it for them. It's wrong. It's morally reprehensible for people in the city of St. Louis to not be able to free, free, feel free in their own homes. We have to move. Yes. You know what? We just saw that happen within about a year and a half to two years ago. We had so many people on our former radio show. Why won't Governor Parson step yes, in? He's right. all about local control. We love him. But. Would you jump in? Is that a situation like you're talking about? Yeah, where you would have to um, come in. We and- have to. It's 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 just wrong for the people of the city not to be able to feel safe. Here's an example. There's about what three hundred thousand people in the city of St. Louis, roughly population. <laughs> That's <continues> generous. To <laughs> um, Cole County, Missouri, has we'll say roughly sixty thousand people. Yeah. So a fifth the number of people. But I think two years ago, Cole County actually filed more criminal charges than the city of St. Louis did. Hmm. Oh, wow. Now, you're not going to tell me that the people of Cole County are five times more criminal, at least if we take out the elected <laughs> officials, yeah. than the city of St. Louis. <laughs> right, right. And that's a tough... So you're, because as that's governor, you're governor for all Missourians. Yes. On both sides of the fence, all Missourians, no matter what area you live in. And how are you going to approach topics mm-hmm. when they come up, issues that come up from Democrats? Democrats say, okay, well, you have to give us this. You have to come so far to meet us in the middle. And I think in the past, and that's when Governor Parson, I think, has fallen and caught a lot of fire is because some people felt, well, he wasn't doing enough for Republicans. But I think people have to remember you're governor to all of the states. You know, I think there's a misnomer there with the idea that as a Republican governor, you serve Republicans and you you don't serve Democrats. As a Republican governor, you serve everyone but you do it with the principles you entered that office in that believe that the purpose of government is to create an environment where people are safe and free to make their own decisions. So you govern as a Republican, but you govern for everyone. Yeah, we're talking with Jay Ashcroft, the current Secretary of State for the state of Missouri, been in that role since 2017, gained a lot of popularity in that role. I know a lot of times that can be a thankless job. It can maybe- I love what I get to. I know, but everybody, when it comes to elections, and my God, where we have come. And we'll get into all of that and what you're dealing with. You're running for governor. You felt it was time. And, um, you know, a lot of people like what you've said so far. Uh, you announced your campaign, was it March or April or officially? Or? I think it was the beginning of April. Okay, because it hasn't been all that long. And, of course, things are going to heat up when it comes to this whole situation. Uh, people hear your name. Of course, they knew your dad's name. This isn't about your dad. It's about you. But who are you as a person as people get to know you? Well, I, I'm, I'm an engineer. I'm a former educator. I'm an attorney. I'm a husband. I'm a father. My, my wife, Katie, and I just celebrated 20 years of marriage at the end of May. I've got four kids. And uh, I'm just trying to do what I can to, to make Missouri better and to improve the opportunity for every Missourian to be the best that they can be. I believe that the best thing you can do in life is be about creating the opportunity, helping other people to be the best they can be. We got so many topics. It's unbelievable. We really do. I I mean, how do you come back? It's (laughs) almost like you do it every month. Yeah. It's um, I mean, let's just go to education. Sure. So that's, it's a hot topic with, uh, you know, a lot of States and who knew that we even had to get involved in public education so much that parents were being called terrorists, the state of Missouri. I'm a Liberty. Yeah, it's exactly right. I, I, I've been kind of talking on this show, like, the only way you can fix education in this state at this point, here's $8,000 voucher, mom and dad, have fun. I hope you find something that you like, whether it's a Catholic school, whether it's a mag school, whether it's public school, that, go to Parkway Central if you want. Don't you think that that's the only way that you can fix a system that doesn't want to be fixed? Yeah, you have to have accountability. And the only way to have parents being able to control that is if they have the money. If, if right. the educational provider knows that if they don't do a good job, they'll lose that money, uh, they will change. And we also need to, everything else in life, we kind of have this Burger King mentality of have it your way. And yet when it comes to education, Mm -hmm. every child's the same. If you're in the sixth grade, this is exactly who you are. We need to break those and say, how do we uh, provision educational services in way that works in the ways that work for kids? How, how would that work? And how could that work in, in Missouri? What I mean, and, and give me a timeline. I mean, are we there or is it something that we'll forget about? Or is it is it just like in the next in your, in your first year, you'll you'll uh, because they're doing it in some states. Right. No, now. this would be uh, one of, if not the major Uh, the main thing that I would push for in my first year as governor. I've been pushing on education reform 
really since 2018, I started a legislative retreat on education mm-hmm. to get legislators together every year to look at what other states are doing, to figure out how we can do a better job. Um, I get to open up the, the Missouri House of Representatives every two years. If you look at this year's speech, if you look at the one I gave two years before, I specifically mm-hmm. called on them for educational choice and educational freedom. Uh, it's a game changer for allowing people to be the, the maximum of the God-given potential. Absolutely. How do you feel about voting in Missouri? I know the last time I talked to you, it, you were all about pushing the vote. Let's all get out as Missourians in this great state and vote. But so many people in Missouri, even in the great state of Missouri, we feel like our vote doesn't count. So many people do not trust even their local elections. And I'm just curious, how do you feel about that? And how do we secure our elections? How do we get more Missourians out to vote? A couple mm. of things. First, I think the top two reasons why people are, don't think their vote matters. One is they don't believe that it matters who they vote <clears> for because they think they're all a bunch of SOBs that won't do what they said they would do. <laughs> and then number two, when you look at states like Pennsylvania that ignored their constitution with regard to absentee ballots, when you look at Wisconsin that used drop boxes in ways that their court said were not legal, when you look at Georgia that had signature requirements that the yes. Secretary of State just said, I'm not going to follow those, it makes people question elections everywhere else. Right. Um, first thing I would say to people like that is be a part. Be a poll worker, be a poll watcher, be a poll challenger. The last thing we want to do in Missouri is push you back. We want you to come back behind the curtain and see. Right. Um, we want as much visibility as we can, as long as it doesn't show how any one person marked their ballot. Other than that, we want to be as transparent and open because elections aren't for elected officials. They're not for the bureaucrats. They're the people's. Having said that, um, a couple of years ago, the Heritage Foundation ranked Missouri as 10th with regard to their election laws. We're now in the top three. Um, we are now in states that other states are looking to. Uh, when I started a year and a half, yeah, a year and a half ago now, pushing back on how Eric did things and saying, Look, these are the changes you have to make or we're going to end up leaving. Uh, by the time I was done with that process, you saw that F- Florida, West Virginia said, yeah, Ashcroft, if you're leaving, we're going to leave with you. And then right behind us were Iowa and Ohio. So we're making changes in Missouri so that people can trust their elections. Other states are following us. There are a lot of things we ought to be doing better. We ought to encourage more people to vote in person to reduce who's voting by mailing their ballot in. A, it's more secure. B, you know your ballot counts that way. You don't worry about the post office. You don't worry about whether or not your ballot can be read. You know, we outlawed drop boxes. We outlawed the curing of ballots. We went to paper ballots so that if there is a recount, if there is an audit, we're looking at an actual paper ballot, just not some ones and zeros on electronic circuit trip. There's all sorts of things like that we can do. We're going to continue to do that. We'll be announcing uh, probably more this summer, this fall, a major election bill that we'll be putting before the legislature to see what they can do with it, because I believe we should always be getting better. I, that's exactly. my responsibility to the people. This I mean, yeah. it, when you look at ele- and, and I this just came up because some they said that St. Charles was a, a problem. And I'm like, I don't I don't even understand how that's a, that is a problem. But if you think that your election is not on the up and up, that's enough. If you hear about a dominion and you see dominions in your area, that's enough. It's I always we talk about it on the show. Iraqis went to a polling station, put their thumb in a purple vat of ink, and they were doing it in front of snipers. And we can't do that in Missouri or the, or nationwide. It's unbelievable. And I think that we – it's a real easy fix. You you show you're a citizen. You basically go there to, in person. No mail-in garbage anymore. If you have to – if you're overseas, maybe that's acceptable. And I think people would feel a lot more secure with Well, the it's the day – we wanted the day off. I'm sorry. We're, we're into – I'm into a day off. Day off. There you go. Off. There's a nice that, solution. A lot of people don't like that. You know, the, the concern with a day off – I was thought you were going to say day of, and I like day of. <laughs> uh, the day off is then I have problems getting poll workers. Because if you have a Tuesday holiday, then people just say, look, I can yeah. leave Friday afternoon. I'll take Monday That's off the vacation day, and suddenly I can't find poll workers. So we yeah. got to do it on a hump day. got to do it on a win. <laughs> One of our biggest problems is actually finding poll workers. Damn. We need Republicans and Democrats, and we want both of them because yeah. we want them holding Absolutely. each other accountable. In some areas, I heard there were no poll workers in, in parts of St. Louis City. Yeah. I don't know if that's true. AJ, one of our viewers said, hey, in Mexico, they vote on Sundays. He lives in Mexico. And, and not only that, <laughs> in Mexico, you have to have an ID to vote. Why don't we need 
IDs to vote. People will say, well, you do. We got that passed in Missouri yes. where you're required to have a photo ID if you want to vote a normal ballot. But what All about, the left was so pissed off about that. I and know, it but, worked. But people tell me still, they still tell me, there's two things that I heard last year during uh, during the voting season. And one was they were very concerned about using Sharpie markers because they were going to their polling locations and giving Sharpies and they didn't feel like Sharpies were safe. And the other thing were people who were just testing the system who went into their polling location said, oh, I don't have an ID. And they were still allowed to sign an affidavit hmm. because they didn't yeah. have an ID. Provisional ballot, yeah. Correct. Yeah, and I think we're going to uh, introduce some legislation this year that would tighten that up where we're talking about requiring a photo to be taken at the polling place of anyone that wants to file a provisional That's ballot. That's a good idea. To make sure that if you meet the requirements, you can still vote. Yeah. But if there are concerns, if you are trying to cheat or scam, Hopefully we can prosecute you. Another problem is we've had trouble getting prosecutors to prosecute. Before. Yes. Yeah. Tim, are you, know, you we kidding had... me? Do we only have till 830? What's the latest we can go? 831? 832? 835, <laughs> I'm afraid. Sure. <laughs> they have a, a busy day today. I looked at the time. I'm like, damn, it's 823 yeah. and we're, we're rocking and rolling. Well, that's why we have to have you come back at least once a month. Okay, I'm Happy sorry. To. Sorry Thanks. to interrupt. I just had to get that out there. Speaking of that, in I. And since we, we might as well just go fast as we can at this point, but um, personal property taxes. When I moved back here to St. Louis, Missouri, um, I heard from the powers that be that we are getting rid of personal property taxes. And then every <laughs> every class after this says, "Oh yes, we're getting rid of personal." What's the status with that? Is that a, a is that even a thing, or can we just dispel that as a myth at this point? I, I think it would be great to do it. I don't think there's any real imp- politicians say a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. unfortunately though, it just shows that Missouri is getting further left behind. Texas is actually moving on doing that. Mm -hmm. Governor Abbott came out strongly. Um, I would suggest in Missouri, we need to concentrate on getting rid of, uh, income tax. Yeah. Uh, I think we, we should not tax people for working. We should encourage people to work. Uh, and then once we get done with that, we need to look everywhere else we can. There's some level of taxation needed for government, but our goal should be that Missouri has the lowest tax burden of any state. Uh, amen. Yeah, that's a big thing for you. When I study what you're about, it's about bringing economy or kickstarting the economy in the state of Missouri. It's about community safety. And then something that I don't think you've really touched upon, maybe in an indirect way, but something that I read, what do you mean about getting back um, to morals? and looking at how we handle things in the state from a, a moral standpoint. Well, A, I think that we ought to treat, you know, you, 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 for me, my guiding post for how you ought to treat people is the golden rule. It's really simple. You treat everybody the way you'd like to be treated. You, you treat everybody equally that way. You're not creating winners or losers. You're just treating everybody, we used to be able to say, fairly. Uh, that's what I believe. And I believe in that, that government isn't supposed to be creating the moral structure. I believe that's for, for faith-based groups. That's for parents. But we need to create that environment where people can be free to practice their faith and to live their lives. Um, I, I don't think we need government imposing its dogma and its its thoughts on the citizens. I think it's supposed to be yeah. the other way around. Right. No question yeah. about it. You work for the people, right? <laughs> That's right. That's my intent. <laughs> and what about law enforcement? Governor Parson, uh, being former law enforcement, has stood up and backed law enforcement at every corner. How are you going to protect our you law enforcement? You cannot have freedom unless there are people that are willing to stand up. Um, otherwise it's might makes right. And without men and women that are willing to stand on the line, either it in foreign countries to protect our country or be it uh, law enforcement officials walking the beat, driving the roads, you have to support them. You can't have an organized society without them. Uh, we need to support them. We need to make sure that they're protected from woke prosecutors that would go after them instead of criminals. We need to make sure that we can pay them so that we can hire them. And frankly, it's not just law enforcement the street, but we also need to make sure that when there are people that are criminal and creating crimes, that we can convict them and put them in prison and have the people to keep them there as long as they're a danger to society. I want to I want to bubble back around because business, well, law enforcement and business are the two things where your top. Is that a little Gen Saki there? A little Gen (laughs) Saki. No, I would never do that to myself. I don't have red hair, but um. St. Louis, I've always driven through St. Louis going, look at the Blythe areas here. These are buildings that were built in the 1800s. Some people live here. Some people don't. St. Louis is right in the middle of the country. Fortune 500s are leaving. They have been leaving. 
NFL teams are leaving. They have left. What is it that we can do to make St. Louis a true incubator for corporate America? What can we do to utilize St. Louis Lambert? We're right in the middle of the country. We yeah. should have a FedEx. We should have UPS here. What is it that we can do to drive business here? Well, I, I think the number two, as we mentioned earlier, are always going to be education and public safety. Yes. Um, but then also the regulatory hurdles, the red tape, how difficult it is for someone to come into uh, a, a building that's already been there instead of to build a new one, mm -hmm. uh, creating, uh, getting the regulations, getting the taxes and the, the, the fees out mm -hmm. of the way so that people are willing to do that. Uh, we need to look at, at Lambert International Airport. You know, we, we built a second air, uh, uh, runway and then we put them too close together. I mean, <laughs> unfortunately, there are a history of bad decisions with regard to Lambert Airport going right. back to when it was moved to where it was. But that should be a gem. We've got the river. Right. It should be placed so well in the middle of the country with an airport, with logistics from rail. Yes. We need to work on uh, container on barge yes. instead of having everything offloaded uh, and tra trucked or trained up here from the Gulf. We need to be bringing barges up the Mississippi and right. frankly, taking them all the way to Kansas City. Yeah. That's great to hear. We got, I got it. I mean, this is a little, <laughs> little levity to the situation. We had a viewer that wanted us to ask you, I want to know if he backs DeSantis or Trump. Oh, <laughs> I, I just I want to know who's listening to your program that wouldn't back them. <laughs> yeah, no. You mean you have someone that no, is going to support no. Joe Biden? No, no, and no, the no, banana no, no, no. I don't think, I, don't no, no, think no. I asked it the right way. <laughs> Clearly, you'll back either one look, of them. We you have, have got to no, elect look. a Republican. Well, yeah. We have had way too yes. long of Joe Biden. I remember when gas price, I think yeah. I think I actually saw gas at a dollar a gallon one day under Trump. I remember yep. when our enemies feared us and our allies worked with us. I remember we had one president during the 2000s where Russia was afraid to invade right. another country. Um Either of those individuals you mentioned would do light years beyond what we have with the bubbling yeah. individual we have. And I don't think that was a <laughs> fair enough. That wasn't a Toyota versus Chevy question. That was a to <laughs> that was a Chevy versus Ford question. They're in the same Who's sphere. Ford? Shut up. <laughs> Everybody, Jay Ashcroft. We got a Yugo now. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. True. Do. What a great comparison. No doubt about that. That one went deep. Uh, hey. <laughs> In about 28 minutes, you covered a ton of stuff. We appreciate it. You're having some fun. We'll have you back on. Please do. Uh, you are the leading candidate right now uh, to replace Mike Parson to be the next governor in the state of Missouri. And uh, we got to know you a little bit better. So anything you want to say before you go out of here? It's 830 right now as we look at. Yeah. Uh, and look, time. I look forward to coming back. I look forward to answering questions from, from your listeners coming back. And I just. I want to serve the people because Missouri can do so much better. We should quit talking about Florida, Texas, Tennessee, Good point. and make Missouri be that shining beacon of liberty on the yes. hill that Reagan always talked about. Perfect. All right. Absolutely. You can, you. You can exit stage right, Jay. We appreciate yeah. it. Thanks. <laughs> Your stage manager needs to leave now. <laughs>